Vitaly may be late. No. Chris Petrus is excused. Paul Pinkney? Here. Aileen McNabb Coleman? Present. Keith Batman? Here. Joe DeForest? Present. Charlie Ripley? Present. Joseph Bennett? Here. Elaine Daly? Here. Pat, Pat Mahonick? Here. Timothy Lattimore? Oh, yeah. I'm here. <laughs> Sorry. Michael Didio? Here. Ryan Foley? Present. Tucker Whitman? Here. I'd like to forego the formalities unless anyone objects. And we will jump into this is going to be the budget presentation. Um, not really looking to have a night of working on the budget or anything. This is just presenting what we have put together from department head request. Um, what is essentially where we're at right now with the budget and we're presenting it and from here we'll go into ways and means for them to work on it. Um, when ways and means is done with their process, it will move to a full ledge. Lynn? Yeah, I can go over. Um, so part of the goal was to limit property tax increase to 2%. Um, our cap this year is going to be estimated at 3.3. Um, also, another goal was to continue managing fund balance per county fund balance policy, 0 to 15%. <clears throat> focus on capital investments in infrastructure and equipment, use reserves for their intended purposes, strategic investments in county operations, um, HR and IT have been a pretty big focus of that. Uh, this slide is a summary, <coughs> kind of shows you, I don't think I really need to explain much there. <coughs> uh, next slide. This is our tax levy over the years, um, kind of staying right right on par with that, I'd say. That's not a huge change one way or another. <clears throat> um, from here, Lynn can take it. Okay, so the, um, the presentation is in the box if you want to look at it um, on your iPads or have it later. And there also is a spreadsheet in there that um, you can look at that shows the budget requests from department heads and it shows whether those requests were left in the budget or they're not in the budget. They're not all included in this PowerPoint. Some of them are smaller um, that you can just look in there and if you have any questions, we can talk about them another time. Um, some of the budget pressures that we have, um, the biggest one right there at the top is the health insurance increase. Um, it was just decided a week or two ago that the insurance is gonna go up 13%. Um, a lot of that is driven by high claimants, especially from specialty drugs. This is the second year in a row that we've had a double digit increase. Last year it was 10%, this time it's 13%. We actually were considering a 15% increase, but we were able to use some of the rate stabilization reserve um, in the health consortium. Um, but it is continued pressure that we're gonna continue to feel <coughs> due to um, the specialty drugs that um, our recipients are all able to use. Um, another thing that we're doing is we have some investments in this budget in some county-owned vehicles. We're looking to purchase three for the Sheriff's Department and purchase two this year. And we're looking to get one for the Health Department and four for Social Services. The budget also includes salary increases for union and non-union employees. The CSEA contract was recently settled and we will be negotiating soon for DSPA and SEAC, which is the sheriffs and the corrections um, units, unions. Um, a couple of larger program areas that we've had for pressure is the increase in social services around homelessness. Um, the health department has had an increase in their preschool transportation program. And the highway has had an increase in SALT. That actually was an <coughs> increased expenditure also in 2019. They we're probably going to be going over budget in that area, and so we've had to increase the budget also in 2020 to uh, cover those increased expenditures. Some budget enhancers that helped us out were some strong um, trending still in sales tax. We are budgeting to be up $600,000 higher for 2020, a projection of $23.6 million. We are looking at probably collecting 23.3 million in 2019, so the 19 actuals will be above the budget. 
Um, we're continuing to be able to use the 911 operations grant to help offset operating expenditures that we have. Um, an increase of $150,000 in the budget there. And we have increased revenue that's related to interest and gain and market values related to investments in the Treasurer's Department. They have been investing in some bonds that they hadn't been investing in before, um, some U.S. savings bonds, and they're getting a higher rate of return at 2 and 2.5% two and before their savings account was only at 0.4. Um, even that has come up to 1.5%. So we are going to have um, really strong performance in 2019 in that area. So we did up the budget somewhat for 2020, but not the full amount that we expect to reach. The fund balance that we're looking at is estimated to be, at the end of 2019, to be $16.8 million. That's actually probably very conservative. It probably will perform higher than that. Um, I'm estimating that we're not going to use any of the budgeted fund balance in 2019, that we're going to return at least $300,000 to the fund balance. It probably will be significantly higher once everything um, plays out for the year. The proposed tentative budget is using $612,000 of the fund balance. So that would result in the fund balance coming down to $16.2 million. Um, the fund balance policy, as you remember, is that should be 10% to 15% of total revenues um, at 13.6 to $20 million. So on this graph, you can see now that we have the yellow light is where the fund balance is at. When we move the $5 million from the fund balance into the reserves, it drops significantly, but we're right in the middle of the range that we should be for our fund balance per our policy right now. This is just a depiction of how much we have budgeted every year to use of the fund balances. This is not the performance, this is just the budget um, amount for each of the funds. The black is the A fund, the DM fund is the white, and that the red there is, uh, I'm sorry, the red is the DM fund and the, the white is the highway fund. This is just a little depiction for you of the revenues that we have in the A fund. As you can see, there's a strong reliance on property tax <coughs> and sales tax. Following that, State aid would be our next um, biggest source of revenue. Here's a depiction of the sales tax um, over the years, the actual collected versus the budget. Um, you can see over time it's been slowly um, going up, except for the one time we had the recession. The one new thing that we really have not been able to determine yet is going to be the impact of the new internet sales tax receipts that we're getting. They started to have to be in compliance in June of 2019, so the first payments that we're going to be getting into the fall for sales tax will include some of those internet sales. So that also will have a full year of that impact for next year. So that's also part of the reason we've gone up a little bit for next year's estimate. This is just a little summary for you of the projected fund balances at the end of 19. We've got the A fund, the highway fund, and the road and machinery fund. So those are your unreserved estimated. And then the appropriations for next year's budget would be at $152 million. This is just a depiction for you of where the spending comes. Obviously, you can see here the majority of it is on the general fund and then the highway and the road and machinery fund, the respective amounts. This is a breakout for you of where we spend our expenditures. And the salary and fringe benefits added together is 41% of the costs of the county. Um, Medicaid we have broken out separately since that's such a significant amount. Equipment you can see is only 1%. Debt service actually has dropped because we used to actually have the um, hospital payments in there, but we also had offsetting revenue, so that would just change the percentages compared to previous grants. <clears throat> then everything else falls into other, which would be all the contractual expenditures that most departments have. So in this budget, um, departments requested to have 13 new positions added to this budget. Some were part-time and some were full-time. 
we've included five new positions in this budget. One would be a full-time position to add back the Deputy Human Resources Administrator. We have included funding for the District Attorney to hire a part-time confidential secretary or similar position um, in his department. We've also proposed converting two part-time positions to full-time positions, one within the Social Services Department and one within the Parks Department at the Nature Center. We've also added a part-time DMV cashier, um, which is actually probably only a quarter time, not even half time. We have eliminated a couple of positions in the budget. One of them is to reduce the administration in the Department of Public Works by one position. The county administrator's position has been eliminated from the budget, along with the executive assistant to the county administrator. We've also changed the funding for the IT director from being a county employee to being a um, contracted position. There are some significant changes in the budget also that I wanted to point out. One is the funding for CETA was eliminated due to the um, net, net assets they have in their audited financial statements. We also have transitioned the funding from the libraries to Nick's Ride. Got your attention. And we've reduced the transfer to the Casualty and Liability <coughs> Fund from $200,000 down to $100,000. There seems to be enough um, funds in that, in that fund to cover any um, claims that we would have. So in conclusion, we try to keep below the tax cap, which right now it's at about 3.3% is what we could raise our tax levy to and still be under the tax cap. We try to continue to have some capital and organizational investments. When you look at that detailed sheet that is in the box there, you'll see several um, repairs and improvements for our buildings. We've taken it out of the operating budget and proposing to use the reserves that were established for repairs to buildings. And the fund balance is still in the middle of the fund balance policy that we have all been trying to follow. So the next steps now after this presentation and we end up um, turning the tentative budget over to the clerk will be to have our Ways and Means meetings, one this Thursday and one next Thursday where we can get into a little bit more detail about each department. Um, you'll see that probably when you're reviewing the book, most departments, their salary and fringe benefits are up significantly. That will be due to union contract increases that are included in there and the health insurance increases. So those will be obvious that you'll see those for the benefits and the retiree health insurances are both up. Um, there is a provision for salary adjustment, a number that's budgeted in there for the unsettled contracts to cover those increases. So that's um, also in the budget. So I just, I wanna thank all the department heads for um, you know, helping us put this budget together. It's never easy for all of us when there's a lot of demands by everybody that are all very valid and very important and we have limited resources to cover them. So, you know, I appreciate their cooperation with all of this. Any questions? Andy. On the health insurance increase, yeah. is that putting the whole increase in the budget or is that figuring part of that going being passed on to the um, workers. The 13% the increase is in the budget. The portion <laughs> that the county has to pay for is all included in there. Um, one thing I did want to point out to you just as an informational point is that 58% of that increase is due to retirees at the county. So a lot of the expense is falling not on current employees, but it's falling on our obligations to, to people who've retired here too. So it's kind of a double whammy when insurance goes up a lot for us. We pay it for actives and we're paying it for retirees also. But are we passing any of that on? Is what I'm the employees are still paying the percentage that they always do. So if they have in their contract that they're paying 30% or they're paying 15% or 20, their part, part also went up. So this is just our part that you see in the budget that we're responsible for. I was going to ask a similar, the 910000 is the county's obligation. It has nothing to do with what employees are paying. Correct. <coughs> Correct. Tim. Uh, Lynn, in regards to the health insurance, as you mentioned, the drug buy, <coughs> I know that I've 
you know, brought to this board in the chairman's past have fought me on the issue of, you know, maybe changing the Canada RX. I know that the high school went to the BOCES drug buy. Are we shopping with the consortium different different outlets to make sure that we can contain maybe the, our drug costs? We are. We're looking at some different solutions at the health consortium right now um, because we're uh, are organized under Article 4, 5 uh, G of the municipal law. We have to have an insured product for our pharmacy and there really are not very many options. So w right now we couldn't just do the same thing that the school district did. We cannot just go to the BOCES. So they are researching if there's any options that we can have, whether we can <coughs> separate the health insurance from the pharmacy component. Um, so those are long-term decisions and planning that we're we are working at at the consortium level to try and look at some alternatives that we can provide. And if we had, oh, thank God we had stop loss for individual and, and the aggregate stop loss is in there, or that that percentage would be higher than, than 13%. It will be. We've had some claims last year and this year that have hit the stop loss insurance, for sure. And Hopefully, if we get to the next step and have a, a bigger population, we might be able to have options available to us that could keep or maintain increases less than double digit. Yes, we're pursuing a lot of avenues for sure at the consortium. Yeah. Mr. Foley. Lynn, can you go back maybe um, a couple of slides? I just want to see what the options <coughs> were. I didn't have on there. Um, yeah, right there. First, yes. Yeah. Do you have the uh, specific amounts on those? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, the Nick's ride is funded at $25,000. Okay. And I believe the libraries might have been um, 31500 previously. What's and the, the casualty and liability <laughs> contribution used to be 200000 It is 100000 in the budget instead of 200000 so the CETA amount that was in the budget that was reduced by $25,000 last year, so that leaves three hundred and twenty-five. dollars It was 300000 in the budget last year. And it went down to zero. Correct. What you're okay. What, Mr. Lattimore? What is our fund balance for cash, our liability and casualty now? What have we got, a million in there? It's, it's, it's close to a million, yes. So that covers all our losses that aren't covered by the insurance. Keith. And the, the, the effective tax rate is what? Um, actually, look, in your book, I actually didn't print that piece of paper with me. Look, in the beginning of your book, it has the... Um, at 2.36%. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure, but I, I don't have it in front of me. 11 percent change. I mean, the tax, the, the rate is going down. 2.06. 2. 2. 0. 0.06. 06. 2.06. It's like the third page, Keith. Thanks. That's for 19. Well, that was 19. In mean, 2020, the tax on the rate is going up 2%. The tax rate change is a decrease of 0.35%. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Now, 0.35. Wait a minute. Right, the very bottom row. Fourth there. paragraph on the bottom. And 2.35, 2.36 is the full valuation change. The rate change is about two percent. Yeah, so 19 tax level percent changes 2.06. Yeah. Yeah. One more question. This this one is for, for you, I guess, or, or for whomever. So if we we've eliminated money for the the um, the administrator, we've eliminated the money for the administrative assistant. Is there any money for the administrations of the, the uh, a CEO or COO or? No. How's that going to work? Not sure. What's the plan? Sure. I was hoping that we would have come up with one a few months ago, but there hasn't been a lot of conversation about it. So my guess is when, by the time we start talking about it next year, we'll probably be halfway through the year before we make up our minds, best case. When so. the, in January 1st, what happens? Sure, keep going the same way we are now. I don't know. Okay. So there's no plan then. That's my question. No, no we seem to have come plans. up with one this year. Okay. There's been no direction. 
mean, in, in, in the 2020 tentative budget, it keeps the chairman's salary as it was, and the vice chair and the sitting legislators all the same? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Economic development is, is uh, key. Uh, what, what is CETAS, uh, they have reserves now of, what are the, how much do they have in capital? Their audited financial statement showed that at the end of 18, they had 350,000 of unreserved fund balance, unrestricted. Net, it's a little bit different. They call it net assets, unrestricted net assets. Can, how much of that was cash, available cash? I, I could look. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I wouldn't think they have big payable. Well, I can look right, right. now. I mean, yeah. I, I don't. Well, I, mean, I don't. Cutting, that my question is this: If we're cutting, if we're cutting the amount because they have money to function, then that that's got to be a cash or cash equivalent. Because as it's, it's, you know, fund balance is not cash or cash equivalent necessarily. So are we just that's we're making the decision here based upon an assumption that that money's available? Is what I hear anyway. That's the rationale for it. We need to know how much that really is. Okay, we'll get that for you. So, Thanks. Mr. Batman, this is the budget I'm presenting to the Ways and Means Committee. After this, I'm sure there will be changes to it. I assume so. What they are, I'm not sure. And if you have those types of questions, somebody can get the answer, or you can call up CETA and get the answer um, along the way. Um, I mean, we're not, well, I, I, not, I'm not here to argue about no, the changes we made I tonight. misunderstood. I was trying to get clar clarification. I thought those were appropriate questions for tonight. That was, that's all I'm asking is for clarification. Okay, we can get that clarification. Right. I don't Thank have you. it. Elaine? And, and the tentative budget you have here uses, perhaps just so I'm, 612000 from in the general fund, fund balance. And then the total comes from taking additional monies out of the various reserves that we set to get to that $1.1 1. 1 million. Uh, no, the, 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 the additional is taking money from the other respective fund balances. Okay. They're, they're so so the, the, the road, that you, right, they're, they're not reserves, okay. right. The reserves are just not budgeted anywhere. They, you'll be able to see that on those department requests. Um, Gary had quite a few for buildings um, repairs, so they're not included in the operating budget. They would just be separate resolutions during the year to spend the amount of reserves. Used for the A fund is that 614000 or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Foley. Uh, okay. Mr. Chairman, we have budget. We have ways, special ways and means meeting on the 7th and uh, 14th. the 14th. So these will just be clarifying <coughs> committee meetings. We're not actually amending. We're not suggesting any amendments during those time periods. Is that correct? No, you should be. That would be the time that ways and means is supposed to make their suggestive changes that then at the Ways and Means meeting, they'll present in the form of a resolution if there's something you want to propose changing that then the legislature could vote on. So these are Ways and Means meetings. They're the ones who will have the vote at, at these meetings to make amendments. Will there yep. be another Typically. vote at, on the 19th when, when the regularly scheduled Ways and Means meeting is convened? If you have proposed changes, that would be when the resolution would be presented to the Ways and Means Committee. Yeah, the, the Ways and Means is going to make, is, is going to recommend changes that they want to see made. They will present a, a <coughs> resolution at that time, and the full ledge will vote on that resolution, unless I'm incorrect on that. But that's the way I think it works. So, are we coming up with the ideas when we have the special legislative uh, Ways and Means meetings, and then they're going to be transferred to the full Ways and Means meeting, or how is when are when are we supposed to suggest, suggest amendments? At all of the Ways and Means meetings, you can suggest. Is is November 7th the next Ways and Means we have? Is that where there are certain departments that are going to be going more in detail of their budgets? That's why you list the various departments under those couple meetings? Correct. So, so that was kind of to help the department heads more to know which nights that they should show up. Um, you know, they and there'll be some form of presentation in, in those departments by you or is that how it's going to work or we're going to probably I'll have a little summary like I've done before to try and point out um, any any significant changes in those departments but, but that we'd be talking about look more deep into those various departments and you'll lead that discussion is that I'm just I'm not it's I'm up to the wondering. chairman I guess <laughs> how it well, it's up to the chair of ways and means right okay how you want to do it right. yes. I'm not running oh, this meeting okay. okay mr. Dennison just 
on the eliminated positions one there, just for clarification. The funding is still there for the county administrator position? No. 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 It's not, okay. There's no county administrator currently, and there's okay. no future plan, so I didn't fund anything for it. Mr. Lattimore. Uh, this shows us the financial picture. Do we know, like let's say we want to do a major project with water and sewer to build a pipeline to Aurora, that comes later. Where, where's that in our wish list for things we want to do? Maybe put some more fiber optic in the ground or build a new office building. Is that, are we going to talk about those things? Or? As far well, as next year's budget? Yeah. Do you, is there a project in progress? I think we said something about a water line to Aurora. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. When they're ready to dig it, we can talk about it. I don't know. Okay. I haven't heard anything. So there's no expenditures on this plan then? Not for a water, water line to Aurora that I'm aware of. Or any other. There was a master plan that was passed, I think. Hmm. Yeah. Mr. Foley. Yeah, Mr. Chair, uh, my apologies. I, I'm still not understanding how it's going to be for the committees. We're going to be hearing maybe presentations from respective uh, committees, their department heads for those committees, the departments that are reporting to those. And then we're also supposed to be suggesting changes to their budgets for amendments that we would like to see on the 7th, the 14th, and the 19th. Is that is that how you see it playing out? It's how it's played out for the nine years I've been here. Okay. I just usually have we've had a period of time where we were able to talk with the departments, um, listen to their feedback, why they suggested things that they did, why things were in the budget. And then we would have the committee meetings where we would suggest amendments. That's that's kind of how I remember playing out. But uh, I'm, we're doing it two and one apparently. Mr. Vitale. Um, Mr. Chairman, you or you or Ben could <clears throat> tell me what the one percent property tax what that yields. Roughly, it doesn't have to be exact. Yeah, it's it's 400. about four hundred. Four hundred thousand. Anybody else on the budget? Not. We'll move on to the resolution we have in front of us, and for that, I will hand, I will let legal explain that one. Do so, need, so there's a resolution. <coughs> Do we need to move it first for discussion? If you'd like to. Second. Okay. Discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There's a resolution before you, and this relates to the opioid litigation. I sent out an email uh, perhaps a week ago um, after I had the opportunity to participate in a conference call with our council uh, that's handling this for us. There's, there's two different tracks to this litigation. One is the federal litigation. Uh, they characterize it as multi-district litigation. It encompasses several federal districts. Um, there's also the New York specific legis or litigation. That's been consolidated in Suffolk County. Um, we are actually, we belong to the class that's in the multi-district litigation, uh, and we're affirmatively involved in the New York State litigation. The judge in the federal suit has imposed a deadline of November 22nd to opt out of what he's termed the negotiating class. It's sort of a class within a larger class. This is a class action lawsuit. Uh, the negotiating class um, in order to start to work on settlement discussions with some of these pharmaceutical companies. Uh, our council is of the belief that we should be opting out of that because that class includes states, cities, towns, villages, and counties. Uh, and by having so many of the smaller municipalities, uh, very likely that it will dilute the settlement. Um, the other issue is the I guess the utility factor. Uh, we've been much more successful negotiating in our own courts, under our own laws, in a state that is probably 
more county centric than most of the other states in the nation. Uh, Napoli, uh, our attorney, also has raised a question whether or not this negotiate, creating a negotiating class is even allowable under the federal mm -hmm. rules of civil procedure. Uh, in discussing the state specific side of things, there's been negotiations already going on with the state and the, and, uh, the county representatives uh, as to how any possible settlement might be divided up, how the funds are to be used. Uh, but ultimately, in, or in order to opt out of the federal class, uh, we do need to have a decision by November 22nd. We don't have a meeting until after that point. If we don't opt out by that point, we're bound by whatever settlement is created in the <coughs> federal court. So that's why I thought it was important to bring it this evening. Any questions? Very good. Mr. Dennison. So <clears throat> in your legal opinion, this is better to not be in the whole big class action suit? Uh, uh, I believe that our counsel in this matter has justified their decision as best they can. You know, when it comes to litigation, there's always speculation. Um, could it possibly be that it doesn't turn out the way we hope? It can. Uh, and certainly, I, I, I've never undertaken a class action suit, so this is an area of law that I you know, don't practice in, haven't practiced in, and probably never will practice in. The counsel that we have practices in this area regularly. Um, like I said, I, I think they've justified their position pretty well, uh, so, so I'm comfortable with it. Um, you know, one, one point that I think is important is, you know, in the negotiations between the state and the counties, uh, Steve Aquario has been working pretty hard on, on the state-specific side. So, you know, to, to disregard any state settlements or judgments that we might obtain in favor of a federal settlement uh, probably isn't the best idea. So I, I'm very comfortable with it, Mr. Denison. Yeah. Keith. Yeah, to clarify, we're still, this does not remove us from the class action. It removes us from the negotiating class exactly. and we it's will not, not the same. Correct. We still are, right. Correct. Thank you. Tim? I make, make a motion that uh, we take Chris's recommendation that we exempt out. <coughs> I think there's a motion on the there floor. Motion is second. Is there any other discussion on through. the motion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? It's carried. <coughs> um, before we adjourn, I would like to thank all the department heads for all the time and effort they put into their budgets and bringing them to us. Um, and then making more cuts and then more cuts and then still not getting what they want. Um, <laughs> which I'm sure they're used to at this point. Um, and I also like to thank Lynn. Um, she put a lot of work into this budget. Um, there's no other business. We can make a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye.